Hello, this is Lurken from Internet's Me, and today I will be giving you a overview of Cubes OS. Um, this is a little bit different operating system than most. Um, according to the website, they call it a reasonably secure operating system. The approach Cubes uses is security by compartmentalization. So different security domains are implemented as separate virtual machines. What does that mean? Um, if you start up cubes, it's going to look like this, except from this little window which I'm using to uh, record this video right now. If you click on the cubes button, you can see a uh, lot of uh, short links. So each of these is a domain, which is a virtual machine. And this is our cubes VM manager. So in here we can uh, view all the virtual machines. So if you go to view and show the inactive VMs, you can see a, a whole lot of more uh, different VMs. So they have different icons and different functionalities. You can see, uh, let's start from the top. So the first at the top is uh, the DOM0, which is our graphical user interface. Um, it's basically used to show uh, the windows for all the different machines up in here. It doesn't have any network connection and it cannot be accessed from any other virtual machines. It's basically a one-way street. Then we have the uh, system uh, VMs, which are some kind of um, virtual machines that are used for, like the name says, the system. Uh, the sysnet is basically um, a little virtual machine which uh, is connected to the network interface and in case that your uh, network card would get compromised, um, there is no way to access the data from all the other virtual machines. Then we have the sys firewall, which is basically just some net forwarding. And we have the uh, sys hunix, which is a hunix gateway um, that basically means it connects to Tor and all the uh, data that is transmitted to the internet is being redirected through the Tor network. Then we do have the uh, template VMs. So um, a template VM is, um, like the name says, a template, and we also have the app VMs, and those app VMs are all based on a template. So you can see untrusted, personal, work, and vault are all based on the Fedora 23. That's needed, for example, just imagine um, you have uh, all these different virtual machines and uh, they all have a browser in them and you uh, get a new version of your browser and you want to update that version. If you wouldn't have a template VM, you would have to update um, the browser in each of those virtual machines. Uh, with a template VM, we can just start up the template VM, update the browser, and then restart the other VMs and they all get the software updates in them. And that is also uh, the first step we are going to start. You can see here is a little arrow and it says updates pending, which means that there are some updates for our template VM. So let's start that up. And we can just open a terminal inside our uh, Fedora 23. And you could um, basically just run a yum update. But that is not going to uh, give us any output and that's because um, there is no network connectivity in here. So if we take a look at the VM settings, you can see that under firewall rules we have a deny network access. So basically, um, this virtual machine has no access to the internet. And since we want to update it, we can just allow full access for five minutes. And now we can use the network. So instead of manually doing this, you can also just right click here and click update VM. Then that's basically what it's going to do. So let's run our update.
Okay, I'm used to uh, using yum as a packet manager, but it's been um, removed and they are now using DNF, which is like an advanced version. They are, I think, rebuilding it in C, so it's uh, going to use less memory and stuff like that. So now um, the repository is updating all the packets and it's going to take some time and I'm going to speed that up and see you in a bit. Okay, so now that we um, finished all the updates, we take a look at the icon here. And it tells us the template VM must be stopped before changes from its current session can be picked up by this VM. So first off, we gotta stop the Fedora 23, the template VM. You can either do it by entering sudo power off or right clicking here and clicking on shutdown VM. Now all the icons here disappeared because now we just have to start those, but we also have to restart those two. So let's go ahead and shut down those two. And the last one. Let's just kill it. Okay, so um, now we start up an application in the personal fire uh, in the personal app VM. Just a simple terminal. And you will note it notice that it starts by booting up the sysnet then once that is done it's going to move on to the firewall one and once that is done then it's going to start up the personal one why is that okay so if we look at the VM settings you can see that um, the personal VM uses the sys firewall as a net VM so meaning the traffic from this VM leaving goes uh, to the sys firewall. If we take a look at the sys firewall, you can see that it's using the sysnet. And the sysnet, so basically the sysnet is uh, connected to your uh, device. So in case that uh, the device would be compromised by, I don't know, uh, some malicious firmware or something like that, then it still couldn't access the data inside the other uh, virtual machines. Um, from there on it's going to the firewall which is just a, a NAT router which is simply forwarding the traffic that's coming from the app VMs and letting it go to the internet. And behind it we have the personal firewall. Okay, so um, let me show you another example of what I mean with um, jailed app VMs. So if we open a Firefox here in the personal VM and we go to the Cubes website and simply set a bookmark, uh, this button here, then if we take a look at the bookmarks, you can see that a link is now in here. So however, if I'm going to start up a different one, let's say for example um, the, the untrusted one, and I start a Firefox in, in, in this one, and I take a look at um, the sidebar here you would see that there is no such bookmark so meaning those two virtual machines really have no interaction whatsoever
So what you can also do with uh, the different virtual machines is uh, change the resources allocated. So in uh, this computer I have a CPU with 16 cores. So I want to add more to the personal one. So I already did that here. Um, by default it's set to 2 and I'm going to change that to 10. And what you can also do is uh, set how much storage we have in this virtual machine. Right now here it's set to 15 gigabytes, which is uh, a little bit too much. I just need like 4 gigabytes in my personal VM. And that's it. So uh, the next part is how I show you how to um, add new app VMs.